alternative and uh, possibly I think actually actually a maybe slightly easier way to create a flexible grid and actually I'll give a couple of options here um, we don't um, this doesn't require the complex sort of finger dexterity and um, um, hand-eye coordination so let's try let's try this so I'm going to create a new file and we're just going to work with on a letter size it and half by 11 standard document uh, we'll keep margins at half inch which is fine I'm going to click create I leave everything else intact here's my document so to get started on the flexible grid again I'm going to select the rectangle tool and essentially again I can um, without without grabbing the images initially I'm just gonna I'm just gonna work with the rectangle tool first so I'm gonna come to the edge of my margin just hypothetically you can start really anywhere but I'm just gonna do the margin since we I'm gonna stress you keeping information within the margins or central information I'm gonna grab and drag so I'm continuing to hold the mouse key and you're gonna need to continue holding uh, the mouse key throughout until you're done with creating the grid so I'm just gonna hold this and then now if I grab with my second hand, if I grab uh, a key, a right key, so essentially an arrow, a right arrow, and I'm going to click it once, I'm going to split this box into two columns. If I click twice, I'm going to get three columns, and so on and so forth. If I grab an up key, an arrow, show, uh, arrow up, I'm just going to create uh, rows and again I can go as many as I want so I'm just going to leave it at four and four and I'm going to continue to hold the mouse throughout this whole process I'm going to drag it to the edge of the margin and I can hold um, you can hold shift if you want to keep your boxes proportionally locked but I don't I just want to make sure I stick to my margins and now I'm going to let go so InDesign now created this four by four sixteen um, rectangle boxes for new containers right no images nothing so at this point at this point i can i can essentially start placing my images into this so this splits up the process into sort of a two steps two major steps i can grab the um the gap tool or you can click u it's both for pc and mac that shortcut works so i'm going to click click this gap tool you'll notice that I, when i move it in between my grid right or i'm sorry in between individual boxes it highlights um the entire sort of the entire column or the entire row of the of the gap that we have here so if i if i click and drag i can manipulate the the height of that row right so let's say i would like to manipulate the relationship just of these two individual images i'm going to hold shift key and you notice if i return the mouse it will only select the space between the two images adjacent images so if i move this way here and so on and so forth so at this point i can grab that key and manipulate the spacing of the two right so and i'm just going to be conscientious of sort of a relationships i want to do i want to make sure that this gap remains consistent uh throughout my document um, because the moment if i do add um anything else sort of or create some kind of an awkward relationship here um I'm going to sort of create these awkward spaces and add to the visual language. So for now, I'm just going to you know, work within the uh, texture that I have established. So there you have it. So I'm just going to create a few relationships here. I'm going to hold shift. I'm just going to grab these two. And now I made my sort of grid fairly dynamic. Again, this is purely play. This is hypothetical. Um, so now that I've created a grid, and again, I can go back and manipulate it later, I could select my my folder of images and i could do one by one i can drag images and essentially hover them over a box that i like to place them into and let go and it's going to place that image so if i double click inside of it you'll notice that i'll get the outer bounds of that image so that image is fairly small and i can manipulate its its sort of a its position within that box if i want to scale it or size it to that box i'm just going to click away return to this container box remember the container box itself when it's selected it's going to appear blue and if i want to select the image i double click on that image and you'll notice i'll get this sort of a red orange bounds boundary and that is uh, indicative of the actual image that is inside of that container so we can think of this container as a mask in some ways that only reveals part of the image that is placed into it 
the image is going to be you know often larger in terms of resolution sometimes sometimes smaller than the box itself so it could be moved and uh, manipulated inside if i'd like that image to fit within the box itself i can again click away select the container right click or control click on that image depending on where you at if you don't have a right uh, two button mouse you can control click i'm, I'm going to find this option that says fitting and i'm and i'm going to sort of click on the film frame proportion and you'll notice that it'll fill that image was the image was the image sort of a uh, fitted to one side or the other but it will, will not distort the image proportionally what we'd like to avoid is doing this to the image where we're trying to size it or fit into the image and you'll notice that I'm proportionally distorting that image, right? So if this is not the best container for that image, um, you might want to you might want to choose a different container. So I'm going to delete it, select that again, and move it into this because to me this is a sort of a horizontally formatted container. It's longer along the x-axis, and therefore I may I stand a better chance of fitting the entire image there. So I'm going to right-click on the container again, make sure that it's the blue. I'm going to click the content proportionally, and there you have it. Now that image is fitted pretty much to two sides, so I have this little sort of a gaps here. So what I can do is right click and try fill frame proportionally, and I'll just size that image just sort of essentially to uh, accommodate that image. Again, we have some loss of information here, but um, this is where I could come in, and if I'd like to uh, manipulate the size of this container, by using a U, U tool, uh, sorry, a gap tool, and I can just expand it a little bit. So if I return to my direct selection tool and I'll click on the image, that image is essentially uh, in relationship with that frame is much better. And I can continue. So I can just grab another image, keep placing them into these boxes, right? I'm just gonna zoom in here. There we go. Can double click inside and up oh, and could do double click and now I can move that image or I can return to the container again I'm selecting the blue and click fitting and fill fill frame proportion and there you have it. So uh, the rest is sort of a similar strategy just continue placing images and then manipulating them at a later uh, at a later time a later later time or right away, whichever you prefer. So, um, and that's essentially it. I think that's one way to sort of, uh, that's one way to handle it.